In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I invite all of you to sort of settle back for a second, maybe close your eyes, and imagine what it was like. You're fishing after a long, long day. You didn't catch as many fish as you'd hoped. You're tired. What do you think you smell like? Fish. fish. You smell like fish, and you think, man, I'm tired. I'm going to go to sleep, and then I'll wake up, and I'll do this all over again. Yeah. No. Well, I bet that's how they kind of felt. And they thought, there's got to be more than this. And they had heard for a long, long, long time that God would do something big in their lives, and they'd been waiting for lifetimes for it to happen. And they're coming in, and they're fixing their nets, and they just want to get some food in their belly and go to bed. And who's walking on the beach? Who's walking along the shore? Jesus. Jesus right? And they don't even know that much about Jesus, but there is something about them that's different. There's something about them that seems special. And then he calls them, and you think he says, hey, you guys? No. What do you think he calls them? He calls them by their names. He calls them by their names. And then I'm sure they're paying attention now. How does this person know my name? And there was something so special about him when he said, come, follow me. Jesus. Jesus, absolutely. And when Jesus says, come, follow me, they listened. And they dropped their nets and they followed. Have you ever heard those words before? Especially you school students. Have you ever heard those words, follow me? Where have you heard those words? Where have you seen or heard those words? All right. On the back of the fifth grader's sweater. On the back of the fifth grader's sweater. We have some graduates with their sweaters, uh, with sweatshirts. And it has a five for fifth grade, and it says, follow me. Where else have you seen follow me? On the wooden cross. On the wooden cross that we have. When do we use that wooden cross? When's the special time that we use that wooden cross? When the year's over, we have our follow me ceremony. Uh, and who hands the cross to, uh, who, to the fourth graders? Who gives the cross to the fourth graders? The fifth graders. And who gives the cross to the third graders? Fourth graders. And to the kindergartners? Who, I skipped a few grades. Who gives the cross to the kindergartners? First graders. So all of the kids gave the cross to the grade, the grade that's coming after them, right? And what do they say when they hand the cross to them? Follow me. Absolutely. And it was in that song that we sung. And if you look at that stained glass window, those in the side chapel, uh, where we often have chapel, where the, the fishermen and their nets, right beneath that, what does it say? Follow me. So it's pretty important. What's that? That's what you were going to say? So that's pretty important to us. Follow me. And who is asking us to follow? Who is asking us to follow? Jesus is, absolutely. So think back to that story on the beach uh, when he calls Peter and Andrew and James, our St. James uh, and John. Why do you think he called them to follow? Why do you think he wanted them to come follow? Anybody have an idea? Because he likes to. That's a good answer. Because they look tired and he cares about them and he knows that they want something more. What else? What other reasons do you think he called them? What other reasons might he have called them? Do you think there's a lot of work to be done? Yeah. He needs our help. He needs our help, absolutely. Do you think he still needs our help? Yeah. Absolutely. So do you think when you hear the words, follow me, it means Jesus is calling each of us by name uh, to help God uh, do God's work in the world? Do you think that might be what it means? Yeah. All right, I think that, absolutely. So, those of you who spend your Monday through Friday at St. James, how do we learn how to follow Jesus? How do we learn what that looks like? How we, how we act differently by following Jesus? Mm -hmm. we, go in the church. we go in the church? And what do we hear in the church? Music. Music? And the music usually tells stories too, but what else do we hear? What else do we hear in chapel? Or in morning assembly? Or in worship? What else do we hear? Virtue, we learn about the virtues. And the virtues uh, that we live by, virtues like compassion and respect. And, and what virtues are we learning this month? Friend, friendship and self. And 
confidence. Uh, absolutely, and and we learned uh, about generosity and around Easter time we'll learn about grace and in February what do we learn in February Valentine's Day what do we learn in February love absolutely and uh, which virtue did I tell you is putting on God's glasses looking at somebody again uh, re respect it's put it's looking at someone again with God's glasses on so we learn all of these virtues and we hear all of these stories from the Bible about how God wants us to live so that when God calls us by name and says follow me we know that means uh, that we live a little differently that we live according to the virtues and so why do you think when we are having our moving up ceremony do you think the fifth graders hand the cross to the fourth graders and say follow me what, what's another thing that follow me means? What do you think? Why do you think we have the fifth graders hand it to the fourth graders and down? What do you think? You don't know? All right, Charlie, do you have a guess? To look up to me in a different way? Absolutely. So you guys, you fifth graders have become leaders, right? And you 6th and 7th and 8th graders and ninth graders, uh, remember when you were leaders and people looked up to you. Uh, who did you hold, whose hand did you hold when you walked into chapel sometimes? Uh, your reading buddy? You remember that? Absolutely. And who asks all those questions and whose hands go flying in the air when you do your service project, 5th graders? Uh, do all the, the younger students' hands go flying in the air? Because they look up to you and because you are a leader and God has given you all the tools you need to be a leader. And so what our hope is, what our hope is, is that when you go out into the world, and when you get to middle school, and when you get to high school, and when you get to adult school, and life uh, in general, there are a lot of people and a lot of things that want to lead you. You know, you look in magazines, and you see pictures of what people say that you should look like. Uh, you know, you see people have lots of toys and lots of things. Uh, you want to sit at the right lunch table. You have people that tell you that you're, uh, that you're really important or not so important by, uh, by who your friends are. Uh, you know, you, you feel like I'm a smart person or I didn't do very well or I'm cool because I played this sport and I'm not cool because uh, I don't have those shoes. And I think God wants us to know that that's not the things that lead us or direct us or tell us who we are or whose we are or how important we are. Why are we important? Why are we important? Because we're nice. Because we're nice? Why are we important? A good one? Why are we important? Because God created us. God made us just the way that God wanted us. God made us out of love. God looked at us and said, it is good, right? And God calls us. And that's what makes us special. Not what other people tell us, not whether we wear the right things or get the right job or play the right sports or uh, sit at the right table, but because God made us and called us to follow. And so one of the things that we spend a lot of time at St. James trying to do is to make sure you know that and trust that and that you guys are not just followers of Jesus, but that God has made you a leader to live boldly and to share that with other people so that they might know that truth too and so that they might hear the voice of Jesus saying, come and follow me. All right, let's say that in unison. All right. So they might hear the voice of Jesus saying, come and follow me. Amen. Thank you.